Okay, in this video, I want to go over uh, the binomial distribution and also how to compute binomial distribution probabilities using GeoAlgebra. So I'm going to start with this example. Let's say we have this uh, statistic: 31% of all college students major in STEM, science, technology, engineering, or math. And uh, we're going to take a sample of 36 students. So uh, first question: What distribution can be used to analyze the sample? And I'm going to type up answers here. We can use the binomial distribution. So I want to talk about why we could use this distribution. Well, there are a fixed number of trials. In this case, n equals 36, where each student in the sample counts as a trial. So there's uh, four conditions I like talking about for bi a binomial, fixed number of trials. There are only two outcomes per trial. The student is a STEM major or not a STEM major. Um, there's a fixed probability success for each trial. And what I mean right here is given any one particular student in the sample, there's a 31% chance that a student is a STEM major. So we've got a fixed number of trials, a fixed sample size, two outcomes we're going to look at. Is the student a STEM major or not? There's a fixed probability for each trial being a success, 31% that an individual student is a STEM major. And lastly, the trials are independent, which we need to assume is true if we have a true random sample. In other words, we want to make sure we didn't sample a bunch of people in an engineering club, let's say. We want to get a true random sample of 36 college students. So with these four bullet points right here, that tells us that we can use the binomial distribution. So I want to find the probability that exactly 11 out of this 36 sample is a STEM major. And I'm going to use GeoGebra to do this. So I'm going to open up GeoGebra. And uh, I can use the spreadsheet or the probability. Or if I go on View, I can go on Spreadsheet or Probability Calculator. I'm going to click on the Probability Calculator. Make this a little bit bigger. You might need to expand. I want to make sure I see all the input. And here I've got the distribution tab, which is what I want. I want to change this normal. Click on that. We see all these different options, which we'll get to during this course. And I want the binomial distribution. Click on binomial. Notice that's what we're using in this example, the binomial distribution. And I got N and P. Notice my notes. N is 36. That is the sample size and P is the probability of an individual success. So 31%, click on enter. And notice a couple features. We've got a, uh, a histogram, or frequency graph. And on the right side, we also have a table of probabilities, or we can use the probabilities on the bottom. So if we go back to the question, I want to know what the probability of exactly 11. So I'm looking for the probability that X equals 11 equals, excuse me. So I want to go back to GeoGebra. And a number of ways I can do that, I can just click on the 11 right here. Notice that my 11 gets highlighted. And uh, down here also, the probability says between 11 is greater than or equal to 11 and less than or equal to 11. We get 14 to 9, or up here 14 to 9. So that's going to equal 0 0.14 probability that exactly 11. So let's look at the second part. What's the probability that at most 10? So I'm looking for what's the probability that x is at most 10. That is less than or equal to 10. So 10 is fine, but we want to make sure that we're less than or equal to 10. So if we go back to GeoGebra, on the bottom here I can click on right-sided interval left-sided. 
if I'm doing a less than, I want to click less than. And right here, I want to match up probably what x is less than or equal to. Change that to 10. Click on Enter. And notice all these values are highlighted. Where the final my distribution is summing up all these individual probabilities you see on the right to get 4148. D, we're looking for the probability that less than 10. So that's the probability that x is less than 10. And uh, you might think it's just the same question, but it's not. Because in part C, we're looking at 10 is a possibility. This 41%, 41.48% includes that 10 people could be STEM majors. And D, we want to not count that 10. It's less than 10. So if I go back to GeoGebra, and you notice right here the symbol of GeoGebra is a less than or equal to. So if I want to go to 10, have it be less than 10, I need to make this less than or equal to 9. So I need to move one spot down, click on Enter, and I get 28.2. So I'll write that here for GeoGebra. We're looking for the probability that x is less than or equal to 9. And that is 0.2802. Last question, what is the expected number of students that major in STEM? So it's the expected number is the expected value. And the notation for that is that mu. And that is n times p, which in this case would be 36 times 0 0.31, which is the probability um, at any individual trial would be a success. But also if I go to GeoGebra, it gives us that right here. The little mu symbol, 11.16. If we multiply these two, we're going to get 11.16. So you'd expect about 11 students to be STEM majors, and that should almost always correspond with, if we go in the middle here, and I click on 11, the tallest uh, part of the histogram. Alright, and uh, that concludes our video.